This is Lawrence, Kansas. Is anybody out there? Anybody? That's the line delivered by John Lithgow in the 1983 TV movie, The Day After, viewed at the time by a hundred million people and still for a lot of good reasons being talked about today. I saw The Day After when I was five. My whole family piled into my basement in Flushing, Queens to watch The Day After as everyone else in the neighborhood was. And they had the sense at five years old uh, to put me to bed before that iconic bombing sequence, thank God. But uh, I got the picture. All these people I was being introduced to were about to die a, a grim, horrible death. You go up and knock on someone's door and say, I'm from ABC and I'd like to blow your barn up. Television event is the name of Jeff Daniels' documentary about the challenges and political grief that director Nicholas Meyer and his team faced while filming the day after in the middle of America's heartland. He'll screen it at Liberty Hall in Lawrence on December 4th, exactly 40 years and two weeks after that historic broadcast on ABC. The White House issued instructions. We want the following edits. Notes, 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 notes. Like, I hope we're not going to see too much peeling skin in this movie the week <laughs> about nuclear war. No, no, no. 1983 was one of the coldest years in the Cold War, only a short time after the U.S. boycotted the Moscow Olympics. And as Daniels points out, the day after appeared on a media landscape that was vastly different than it is today. This was a period where more people were watching network television than ever before or since. That's why you could get 100 million people watching the same thing at the same time to create that kind of shared emotional experience that people would talk about the next day, despite their differences. Daniels will be joined at the screening by members of cast and crew, as well as Lawrence notables like former Mayor David Longhurst and longtime KU theater professor Jack Wright. All this run down by the water was cleared out here, but mm -hmm. it was full of stuff, tents down here. Oh, it, was, it was amazing. Despite many years of stage experience, Wright found himself learning by the seat of his pants as the movie's director of local casting. And there were lots of extras to cast. Oh, I'd get home about 10 o'clock, I'd hit the sack, and I'd be up at 3, and we would be at work at 5.30, getting people hired and getting them into costume and makeup and getting them ready. I don't know if it could have happened really anywhere else because everybody was so excited about it. They wanted to be in it. The extras were, I think, a really a highlight of the film. The legacy of the day after also touched Wright in another way. His stepdaughter, Ellen Anthony, snagged a small speaking role in the movie. While the cast included the likes of Lithgow, Jason Robards, Joe Beth Williams, and Steve Gutenberg, big names took a back seat to bigger concerns. No, it's about common people. It's about what happens if something like this disaster happens and your life changes in a dime, just instantly. Uh, that's why, I think that's one of the reasons why the movie was so effective, really. Both Spencer Research Library at KU and the Watkins Museum of History have collected artifacts from the production and the activities that followed. These buttons in the university's archives speak to a part of the story that is sometimes overlooked a wave of citizen diplomacy, inspired, Bob Swan says, by this scene of cinematic devastation on 9th Street, just a block from his downtown insurance office. And I'm standing there with my daughter Amy, and she said, Daddy, are we going to have a, a nuclear war? Fallout was falling down from the fallout machine. They had that coming down right in front of the bullet war. So it was a powerful, uh, it had a powerful impact, and, and that, that's how I got involved to, to try to make a difference. In the spring of 1983, Swan and associates like Mark Snow arranged for a group of Russian athletes to compete at the KU Relays. But that exchange was just the beginning of a people-to-people -people style relationship between the two nations that he continued to pursue. We had about 23 or four different events and activities and exchanges and there's things going on all the time. I had 35 trips to the Soviet Union between about 82 and 93 or so. Swan gets far fewer air miles these days, but now he's got a new goal. An international peace center headquartered in the town that survived Quantrill's raid and brought nuclear winter to people's TVs. 
The day after, he says, was a game changer that, for a time at least, truly helped make the world safer. The day after grabbed Reagan, and he fundamentally changed his attitude and his strategy toward negotiations. He said, we need to just get rid of these weapons. As a direct result of this film, you could see that the meetings that they had resulted into this shift in rhetoric. No longer could they allow members of their administration to say things like, uh, with a shovel and six feet of dirt over your head, you can survive nuclear war. So I think it's quite significant that Reagan made that point in his State of the Union address, which was a few weeks after the broadcast of the day after, and made that comment um, that nuclear war should never be fought and can never be won. It's a significant move for a television movie of the week.